Please welcome Mark Kwame. Mark. Well, thank you very much for that uh, kind introduction, Chairman Restrepo. Also, I'd like to give a, a shout out for Denny Griffith, President Griffith. You, not, not only is he a great leader, he's a phenomenal artist. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. I've been blessed in my life. I, I grew up in the Silicon Valley, saw computers grow, saw the first calculator, saw the first computer, saw the first digital clock, the first digital watch. I was able to work with some uh, phenomenal people. And then I was also blessed coming to Ohio and working with Governor Kasich and also finding Megan Browning, who I'm very blessed to be with. But one of the greatest blessings I've ever had is working with creative people. Creative people change the world. They design things. Everything around here has been designed and thought of first by somebody in their head and then implemented for all of us to share. Just look at this building. I wish you could sit where I am here right now. Just think of the artisans and what they did and how they crafted. Think about the wood crafter over here or the painter over there. I look at the chandelier above us. It is phenomenal. All of these things were created by great designers. And I have personally been very, very blessed to work with some of the greatest. I've been able to sit in the studio with Hans Zimmer, who the famous film composer, as he's creating the film score for Sherlock Holmes, or listen to him talk to me about how he created Gladiator or Lion King, or sitting down with Lee Clow as he designed the, the advertising for Apple Computer, or I gotta tell you, you have one of them here, Les Wexner. I had a meeting with Les Wexner a while ago and we were talking about business and all this kind of stuff. And at the end of the meeting, he said, Mark, I gotta show you something. I said, oh, cool. He's gonna show me something. He was showing me the new bottle he was designing for Victoria's Secret perfume. He was more excited about that little bottle and the bag that's gonna go in that, bo that bottle's gonna go into than all the business and every, all the accomplishments that he has had. Why? Because he's passionate about design, about the creative process. Also, I've been fortunate to work with folks like comedians and, and actors like Will Ferrell. My son, uh, many years ago, uh, now about five and a half years ago, came to me with an idea. And he said, uh, Dad, uh, my company, uh, Sequoia Capital, was the original funder in YouTube. And he, he's a comedian. He was 17 year old, years old at the time. He said, Dad, there's nothing funny on YouTube. I can't find it. He says, what we need is a website that marries YouTube with Hot or Not. I don't know if you remember the Hot or Not site. You put yourself up on the Hot or Not, and people would rate you, 1 to 10. I'm a 5.8. Um, <laughs> anyway, but anyway, what was brilliant working with Will Ferrell, I'll never forget the first time I met Will. He is all about making people laugh. I sat in a room with him. Actually, it was in the trailer of, uh, of uh, Blades of Glory, one of my favorite funny movies. And he's sitting there in his Chaz outfit uh, and just cracking everybody up. But then he got to the serious thing. He said, Mark, if we're going to create this Funny or Die website, we need to work together. We need to figure out ways this can only work if we make people laugh. So I have been very fortunate to work with many people across the creative spectrum. And the one thing I have noticed, both in creating products and services, as well as creating companies, working with the folks when they started uh, Yahoo or Amazon or eBay, is that most of the time people create things in their 20s. Many of you here are in your 20s. Now, why do you create things in your 20s? And why do you do some of your best work? Einstein, for example, did most of his great work in his 20s. I would really come to a couple things. One, you don't have a mortgage, okay? When you can actually put your thought and your effort and your mind and, your, and everything into something and not worry about paying the mortgage or the car bill or the utility bill. You can be really creative. If you look at the great creators, whether it's Les Wexner or whether it's Hans Zimmer, these are folks that still channel their 20s. And so what I would challenge you as you sit here today is how do you challenge your 20s? Do Remember, what you do is really, really hard. People think, oh, you just came up with that little painting, or oh, you just came up with that idea. But we all know how hard it is. I'll never forget, I was sitting in the studio with Hans Zimmer, 
two and a half weeks before the first Sherlock Holmes movie was coming out with, with, um, with Robert Downey Jr. And I said, Hans, you look a little stressed. He says, Mark, I haven't found the melody yet for the movie. And it, I have to compose the whole thing in two and a half weeks. And uh, to the left of him was a violinist. I, I've forgotten his name, a very famous violinist. And I said, well, what are you guys doing? He says, I'm trying to find the note. How do you find that note? And so he spent weeks and months finding that note. And then once he found the note, he built the melody. And that's what you do. You find your note and then you build things around that. And I challenge you to go see uh, Sherlock Holmes. I think that movie was made by the music and the work that Hans uh, Zimmer did. And so in finding your moment, I don't know when you're gonna have it happen, but you need to find it. And you need to challenge yourself to find it. Myself personally, I was a, a programmer, first at Apple Computer and then at IBM. I was at IBM in Norway, and I'll never forget it. I sat down in front of Bjorn Juvit. And Bjorn Juvit, my Norwegian was mediocre at the time. I could barely speak it and somewhat understand it. And he sent, spent the next 90 minutes telling me about this product that was gonna be a sales planning product he had to have done in three and a half weeks for his boss. And he says, I want to do this, 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 and this. And then, uh, then he proceeded to say, oh, well, by the way, I'm going on vacation. Uh, and I had to have it done when he comes back. And I struggled. I couldn't figure it out. I, I mean, I literally, and my moment came at lunch on the top of this building in Oslo, Norway. I'm eating a roast beef sandwich. And an epiphany happened. Oh, this is how I can do it. And I ran, ran down to my computer and literally, after weeks of work, I wrote the whole program in about a couple of hours. And I'm sure that same thing Hans Zimmer, he got the melody. But what you got to remember is, it is a lot of work to get to that point, but you have to find your moment. Because when you find your moment, then you know you can do anything. No one can do anything to stop you. Your potential is exponential. And so as I, as I think about that, I, you know, I'm, I'm a commencement speaker here, so I have to give you two pieces of advice. They forced, Denny said you have to give them two. He said, speak for 90 minutes. And then he said, give them two pieces of advice. And I said, here are the two pieces of advice. I've worked in the creative world for many times. I was very fortunate to build an agency called CKS. And I worked with some phenomenal people. We had hundreds of, of folks and recruited folks from uh, you know, RISD and Art Center and I'm sure from CCAD and other great schools. And two pieces of advice I give you. This advice, piece of advice was given me by Jean-Louis Gasset when I worked in Apple France. He said, Mark, I can't do his French accent very well. Mark, get fired on your feet, not on your knees. Stand for what you believe in. And, the, and that's, I'm sorry, I get emotional about that because that, that, that was such an emotional part of my life because I realized for the first time that it doesn't matter. I can change the world. I can do what is important. The second thing I would say, all of you in the business world, in the creative world here, and Denny and I were talking in the back room. You know, at CCAD, they teach you not only how to, how to do your craft, but how to do it in a business sort of way, how to make money, how to make a career out of it. Because eventually, should you get married, your spouse would like you to have a mortgage and have a house. And you probably want to have children, then you have to send them to CCAD and it's not free, right? No. Uh, <laughs> You need to find a business partner. Uh, Hans Zimmer has Steve Kofsky. You know, Will Ferrell has Jimmy Miller. Uh, if you look at Prada, Valentino, all the great creative companies are the combination of a business partner and a creative person. You need to find your business partner. And that is something that is very, very important. So what I thought I'd do is i close on a story. Um, I was very fortunate to work with Steve Jobs for 15 years. I haven't done this before, this is hard. Uh, I was fortunate to work with him for about 15 years. And in 1997, he uh, uh, went back to Apple. We were doing a ton of work at Next. Actually, I gotta, I'm gonna zip, this is not in my notes. Uh, back at Next, I'll never forget, Next was this creative workstation, you know, Wall Street guys, and all these guys were using it, and it was doing terribly. And I'll never forget sitting in the office with Steve and we're sitting there at his office and we're going into the kitchen and he looks at a toaster and he says, you know, Mark, I'd be much better designing a toaster than I would be a computer workstation. 
And when the iPod came out, I can't forget to think about that story. I mean, he was, he, the guy just really understood things in the very simplicity of them. You know, you put down the knob and out comes the toast. Uh, anyway, he, when 1997, when he went back to Apple, it was a, a, a tough time for Apple. They were nearly bank bankrupt. Uh, the company was all over the place. And he knew he had to create an anthem, a rallying cry for both people who were the fans of Apple Computer as well as, as, well as the, uh, the, the employees. And so he wrote the Think Different ad. And he worked with Lee Clow on this ad. And I just want to read a couple lines from this ad. I'm going to play the ad for you. It said, the title was, Here's to the Crazy Ones. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers. Are there any troublemakers out here? One or two. They change things. They imagine. They explore. They create. They inspire. They push the human race forward. You take a blank canvas and you push the human race forward. And so in 1997, uh, he called me up late one night. I was like, he, he's great at that, calling you at 10, 11 o'clock at night, picking up the phone, hi, it's Steve. Uh, and he said to me, Mark, I gotta read you this ad. And he read me the Think Different ad. And he, I said, Steve, that is unbelievable. I said, it needs to be in your voice. Um, two weeks later, it came out. It came out in Richard Dreyfuss's voice. Uh, and I said, okay, well, great. It came out in Richard Dreyfuss's voice. Uh, he never listened to me anyway. Uh, but anyway, make a long story short, it turns out he actually recorded it. So after his death, Shiat Day put that out on the internet. So I'm going to bring down a screen here, and I'm going to play the Think Different ad for you. But before we play it, I want you to think about something. In this ad, there are 17 people of around the world, great leaders. The region of the world that is most represented is the Midwest. We were the creators of the 1900s. We were the myth misfits. And so I really want to challenge you as you watch this and you think about uh, what you guys are gonna do in your careers. Um, stay in Ohio. Let's make this place what it was. We have so much opportunity. I believe we're gonna see a renaissance like we've never seen before. And it's up to you to help us make that happen. So this came off the internet. Is the screen gonna come down here? We're having technical difficulties. How's he doing? Oh, here we come. So thank you very much, Steve Jobs, and think different. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules, and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them because they change things. They push the human race forward. While some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do.